My small showman's engine needs some repairs. This is part nine, a major modification to the LED lights in the canopy, which over the years have been problematic. Now quite a few of them don't work anymore. See what happens when I overpower the existing ones using a variable power supply. I really never wanted so many lights on the engine. The number of LED lights that are used around the canopy was dependent on the length of the legs on the LEDs themselves. But first of all, a flashback to the last time I worked on this engine. And as you can see, all of the LEDs are working, but they don't look too good. LED lights and traction engines don't seem to go together. The original 80 LED lights that are fitted to the canopy gave a really odd light, sort of a blue purpley colour. And that was dependent on the speed of the engine and the voltage supplying the LEDs. Back now to the current day and here's the canopy upside down on a piece of bubble wrap. The box at the front is a power regulator which converts the output of the dynamo to 3 volts. This is one of many adapter cables that I have and I'm going to use this to connect the regulator to a variable power supply. I bought this power supply when I was doing some experimenting with electroplating and it seemed fine for that but it's not too good for this job. After I turned the machine on, I set the voltage to 11.84 volts and as you can see by the green light, it is set to constant voltage mode. But once I plug the regulator into it, between the positive and negative terminals, or even between the positive and ground terminals, it sort of went a bit wrong and automatically changed to constant current mode. I know, I'll turn it off and on again. Here it is off and I'm about to turn it back on and see what happens. It's currently still connected to the regulator. The constant voltage LED glows and then it switches to constant current again, CC. And no matter what I do with the constant voltage potentiometer, nothing happens except there's a bit of smoke coming from the box on the canopy, which is generally not a good sign. I'll leave that for a moment because these regulators are very cheap things anyway so I'm not too worried if it has blown. And at this stage I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the LEDs around the canopy, probably replace them with half as many. The LED mounting rails are made from mahogany and fasten in each side using three 6BA bolts. After removing the third one, the mahogany strip was not fastened to the traction engine's canopy anymore. I'm quite surprised how badly marked the paintwork is on the canopy because this engine lives on the sideboard. And here is the underside of the LED wiring. And yes, don't bother writing in, I'm aware that it's really horrible. This job was done long before I made videos. I think I did this job originally when I was young and stupid. It was in 2013. Or should I say younger and stupid because I'm well on the way to 71 now in the year 2023. All of the LED wires that attach to the LEDs are soldered to each other, just with a blob of solder, which is a terrible way to do it. I used to work on valve amplifiers and Hammond organs, and they used what's called the tag strip method, and any components were twisted around the tags before being soldered to give mechanical strength. Here's a shot of the regulator inside the small box that fits under the canopy, and it looks OK until I turn it over. Two of the components on the power input are definitely cremated. I'm not going to bother with this, I'm just going to replace it with another. They are really cheap these days. You can get them in batches of six at a time for very little money. I don't want six, I just want one. The annoying thing is though, when I bought this regulator years ago, I did buy two, anticipating failure, but over the years I've lost the first one. I tried to make a good job of the housing for the regulator and I fitted it with sockets to plug the LED arrays into. Another shot of the underside where all the LEDs are soldered together shows that they really are fairly poor. I accept full responsibility for this, I just couldn't wait to see it all lit up at the time when I was making the LED bars. I do remember that drilling all of the pairs of holes took some time. This is what I've just done to illustrate a point. I've reinforced the connection with a long piece of copper wire. Now all I need to do is scrub away the flux and it should be fine. 
And for this I'm using one of my semi-green bamboo toothbrushes with nylon bristles. And with the area cleaned up, I applied some power. About 3 volts from the variable power supply. And the lights glow quite brightly. Maybe a bit too brightly. The dynamo on the engine itself gives from 6 volts to 30 volts and the LEDs would normally not even glow this brightly when the engine was running at a high speed driving the dynamo. One thing that I have noticed, by overpowering the LEDs slightly, two of them have gone, so I think it's time to have a bit of fun. I'm currently supplying about 3.5 volts to the LEDs, and don't forget these are not fitted with resistors. As I turned up the power, they started flickering and making funny noises and burning. And as you can see here, the reaction was quite alarming with a bit of fire. And there's now quite a pungent smell in my workshop, I think I'll go somewhere else. This is a one-off light show just for your entertainment. So there's nothing for it, I'm going to remove every one of these LEDs. I've removed a few using a pair of pliers, but this is not an ideal way of doing it. I need to strip the rails right back to the mahogany, with every trace of the LEDs and wiring removed. Then maybe I'll fit some more, slightly larger ones, on every second hole spacing. I'll have a look on the intershed and see what's available. The smell in the workshop is not very good at the moment, and it's not me. I think it's time for me to go, and I'd just like to say, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.